We are coming off a, an incredible Monday night football game, and I have a tale to tell. It didn't end well for me, but stay tuned for that. It's also Tuesday. That means the waivers. This is how you improve. This is how you outwork your opponent. We look at some guys, see if it's smoke, see if it's fire. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and enjoy the show. Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to thank DirecTV for supporting the podcast. You know what you want? You want what we had this past weekend. Oh, which yeah. Which was too much football to even comprehend, too much to take in, which is just enough. Uh, not just one game, not just two, all of them live. But maybe you can't get direct TV where you live. No problem. Stream 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on your favorite devices. No satellite required. It's like having front row seats to every live out of market game every Sunday afternoon. NFL Sunday Ticket TV. It lets you follow your favorite team no matter where you live. Like I said, you watch every out of market game. You get every Sunday afternoon game live on all your favorite devices. You get the Red Zone channel, which we have on permanently every Sunday. And you've, you've even got the player tracker. You can you can follow and track up to 20 players, which is pretty cool. Go online to NFL Sunday Ticket TV slash Sunday Ready right now to see if you're eligible. Pro tip, use the promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout to save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for NFL Sunday Ticket streaming, go to nflsundayticket.tv slash sundayready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Walleris, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Goo goo ka Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, September 14th, the Fantasy Footballers. <laughs> what? What? I mean, that game was insane. Talk about starting the NFL season off yes. incredibly, and then that first week, just what a sandwich. I didn't see it. Who won? Mm, I see what you did there. It was a tremendous call. You want to catch me up? The Raiders pulled off the upset. As called by Andy Holloway. You know, uh, you gift me pretty quick in that game, too. Oh, I know. I knew I was playing with fire. <laughs> oh, baby. It was only 7 nothing. I mean, it was like a. <laughs> it was the very beginning of the game. I had a lot of fun with the call because every time the Ravens did something, I would tweet, uh, delete, 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 or some, some unsettling gif. And then every time the Raiders did something, I'd tweet the opposite. It, you know, it was a heck of a game. Talk about a bookended game. Yes. Week one of the NFL with the incredible Thursday night game. Um, and then last night, which, look, it was a wild ride. It was a heck of a game. I don't imagine many people played Derek Carr against Baltimore's defense on Monday night. But if you did, the uh, just kidding, we're not kicking a field goal. Hail Mary to Zay Jones was quite, quite the way to end. But. I just want the, the listenership, all of you joining us, thank you, by the way, mm -hmm. to, to just recognize how with you we are. We've, we've, from the first moment that we started this podcast, even the reason that, that the set and the YouTube set and table is the way it is, is because you are the fourth person at the table with us. We limit the amount of leagues we play in because we want the same energy, the same drive, the same commitment to same our- drama. Our core leagues, which means we want investment because if we are invested in our leagues, we can give better advice. All of this is a prolonged introduction to misery for Mike, the <laughs> fantasy hitman, right? <laughs> I, which I am here. Uh, uh, yes, I'm surprised you are here. Contrary to a uh, uh, very popular tweet that Andy put out, <laughs> I have pulled myself up by my bootstraps and I'm here. Yeah, yeah. You, you did show up to work. Step one of the fantasy football recovery process. But let's catch the listeners up with the pain. 
Last night you had. Do we? Do you want to break down the game first, or do you want me to, to unleash my story first? No, I think the story. Yeah, okay, would, and we'll get, transition right, right into the game. I get right into the pain. All right, so I'm. I, I need a Monday Night Miracle. I have Tyson Williams. I have Lamar Jackson, and I need. Uh, it was forty about, something. I need forty something points. And doable. On, yeah, it's definitely doable. And on top of that, the uh, look Arizona. The sports books have just opened up here, and they're giving out some promo stuff. So I'm like, you know what? Let's get nuts. And I put, I use one of my promo uh, bets on this unbelievable parlay of player props and things that need to happen in this game. Yeah, how many legs was it? I was twelve, it like I think. Twelve I, legs. I, I, or it was, I, it was not, maybe, maybe ten. Maybe I don't 10. know. It was it was a disgusting. It was horse. one of these things where you're like, there's no way this can happen. But if it did, the payout would be ginormous. Uh yeah, forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars, ginormous. And one of those was Tyson Williams has to score at some point and he has to get over sixty rushing yards. Ding ding. Well, the game started out pretty excellent for that prop. Sammy Watkins needed to get over twenty five receiving yards. Well, look at this. This this already hit. By halftime, we're going into going into the second half. For this player prop to hit, which I had been I had been, you know, tracking the guys with it and it's kind of starting off as a joke You're like then we get to halftime and all i need is 90 passing yards from lamar jackson and mark andrews to catch a uh, to catch a touchdown and have 20 more receiving yards it's like holy crap this so you're, you're riding happen. high on this possibility yeah then as the game is working out we uh we're getting into the fourth quarter Okay, the, the the bet's starting to fall apart, you know, here. And then Lamar hits, was that Sammy on the on the big catch? Yeah. So he hits Sammy Watkins for that huge gain. Sammy Watkins somehow doesn't score a touchdown. He goes down. And Lamar's over and, now. And Lamar has, everything is hit. All I need is Mark Andrews to score uh, this touchdown. This, <laughs> this huge opportunity. If Mark Andrews scores this touchdown, I am in line to make $40,000. <laughs> I start... Freaking out! I'm pacing the room because I had not told, I like I told my kids I'm like I got some a lot of things I need to happen in this game and it can be crazy, and now by this point now my wife is in it. I'm like, if Mark if this one particular guy <laughs> catches a touchdown right here, I'm gonna make a lot of money. She's like, how much? I'm like I can't even say I it out loud. You. I have to walk over and I'm like I hold up like I hold up the four zero. She's like. Forty thousand dollars. <laughs> like, yes. If Mark Andrews catches a touchdown, they line and and on top of that, if Tyson or Lamar score right here, I win my fantasy matchup. Like, this is such Le an live right looking here. good. This is it's such an insane comeback for that. Such a huge amount of money. They show the formation, you know, because Monday Night Football they they say all the players that are out there. I go, wait, wait, he's not even out there. <laughs> Mark Andrews isn't even out there. And it's Latavius Murray. They give him the ball, and some of the Raiders can't stop Latavius Murray. He runs it in. My bet explodes. I'm like, oh. At least Lamar came through and actually outscored your opponent, which is true. Yes. Yeah, so now the $40,000 bet has blown up, and I'm like, okay. If the Raiders can somehow score here, Lamar's going to have another chance, and I can still come back and win. Raiders score inexplicably. Uh, Lamar Jackson ends up with a huge run. After that huge run, I am down by point four. I think is was how much I was down. And you know that they're just going to run out the clock and kick a field goal. And it's okay, this is I I just need Lamar Jackson, please run the ball. Please run the ball. He runs it once. I'm now down by point 2. They, they hand the ball off. They go nowhere. And then the next play, I'm just pleading to the fantasy gods, just let Lamar Jackson run the ball. Just let it happen. Sure enough, read option. Lamar Jackson, three yards. I go up by point one for them to kick the field goal, win the game. It's all going to be done. The only thing that can now happen is the Raiders somehow score. And go, the game goes into overtime, and Lamar Jackson has a turnover. Well, you saw how the game ended because Lamar Jackson had a turnover, and I end, I end up 
losing. I lost everything. <laughs> I I had the world at my fingertips. My fantasy matchup, forty thousand dollars on a stupid bet, and I lost it you all. Get nothing. Got- <laughs> and there's there's different knife twists throughout, like Brian Edwards, who you've talked up. If he scores on that play, you win your fantasy matchup. If Derek Carr sneaks it into the end zone, you win on the fantasy matchup. If he throws the ball to Willie Sneed and it's not 5,000 miles an hour, you win your fantasy matchup. The only way you lose is for him to throw an inexplicable interception and Lamar to turn the ball over. It happened, and you melted into a puddle. This is your Phillip Rivers moment. Oh, yes. This is definitely my Phillip Rivers moment, and – Except for for Rivers, you already disliked Rivers, mm, that's and true. he was the, he was the the executioner for you. For me, it was Brian Edwards, the man I loved and talked up, and who who couldn't get a target from Derek Send Carr. Send in the car. Send in the car. Like, Derek Carr would prefer to throw to Darren Waller in double coverage than a wide open Brian Edwards running underneath for the same amount of yardage. I have no idea what Derek Carr was doing. So. What did we learn from the game last night for fantasy purposes? Uh, oh, my gosh. What do you do with Brian Edwards? That I am a dead body. Brian Edwards is a goose with two minutes left in the game. Yeah, I, as, as someone who has a lot of Brian Edwards in, in the leagues I play in, I was happy uh, towards the end of that game you to know I, that I have an answer. I could cut Brian Edwards and move on um, because, you know, waivers are, are going to run. I'm looking at my rosters, looking at who I'm going to – Which uh, is today's show. Yes, we're doing today, waivers we're, today. <laughs> we're going to be talking all about waivers. Um, and so I was like, okay, I've, I've got someone to cut in Brian Edwards. And now it's like he showed up. He was part of a heroic victory. His – you know, what he did on the field helped them win – and now I feel like I've got to hold him. Um, he, 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 I think we'll we'll get into you know where that line is of players I would definitely take over Brian Edwards and and those that I would not. But um, other things that mattered, obviously, nineteen targets for Darren Waller, that mattered. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and, and the the reality is, <laughs> you know, the other the other question. I mean, you know, you're playing Darren Waller. You know he's the entire offense. It's just been affirmed again. But I, I'm not sure what to do with Tyson right now because he obviously had the big breakaway run. That, mm-hmm. but that you know one play really inflated the value. Caught some passes. I liked seeing that. Latavius was involved. One more carry than Tyson. Uh, both scored, and then you had the the fumble. Uh, from what I had heard, you know it was kind of Tyson's fault that that fumble was given up missing the block and I just wonder where is this headed for Tyson Williams because I think this could be one of those things where you how you went into the game thinking about him the results might you know you could bend it both directions I I think this is at the end of this game I think we saw what's going to happen going forward which is it is a two-headed 50-50 timeshare that I think it will be these two guys I don't think it's going to be Lev Bell or Devonta Freeman. I I think that Tyson Tyson showed enough, and and so did Latavius. Where uh, Tyson's going to get better. This was obviously his first NFL game, and you know to make some rookie mistakes um, is expected as a rookie. So I I, I think he uh, will be involved. I would like both players in fantasy. Both, if for some reason they were not already rostered, uh, should definitely be picked up. Yeah, I, I'm more positive towards Tyson. When you look at the situation, saying, "Hey, he's got, he's got the breakaway ability. He's got the ability to do something more explosive. He ran a lot better, even though Latavius had more carries." He's uh, also involved in the passing game a little bit. Yep, which really hurts me from a J.K. Dobbins perspective. Well, that's they were desperation throws. All three of them were kind of squished pocket. Oh, you know, last resort, left side, the, not uh, designed. Uh, the first one wasn't designed. Yeah, it was a swing pass over to to Williams, but. Dobbins is exactly the point. Tyson is Dobbins. Like that's the role. And Latavius Murray looks like he is the Gus Edwards. He's probably right. Role. And so yes, both of them are going to have fantasy value. It's not going to be it, there will be inconsistencies just like we were projecting for JK Dobbins right. and but you'll have games where both of them score a touchdown just like this week. You'll have games where Neither of them score because Lamar is the one who gets two rushing touchdowns on the week. They're both usable running back twos, though. Jason, would you try to trade Tyson on the bigger game? 
Uh, I would be willing to shop him if I could capitalize on someone who really believes he's going to be a, a monster fantasy finisher, you know, a top 15 type running back. I would, but I'm not trying to get rid of him because I think he's a solid asset uh, for fantasy. And also I'm cutting Henry Ruggs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that uh, seems I mean, like was, a thing to do. Like, Did you say John Ross? <laughs> the What's so bizarre for both Ruggs and Edwards Watching the game, you know, I, yes, I'm biased towards I want Brian Edwards to get involved. But honestly, Derek Carr just like the problem is not the wide receivers. The problem is Derek Carr is only looking at Darren Waller. Well, like, it, he has he has become so entrenched in the security blanket that Waller is. And Waller's a great player. I mean, he ended up with an incredible line, but how he had 19 targets. Yeah, right. 19 targets and only catches 10 of them. I mean, Carr is forcing a lot of passes to Waller yeah. that he shouldn't be. He missed Waller on several open plays, though. That was the other thing. That's, that's yeah, like, that How too. much of this is Gruden? Because this, all this play calling comes from Gruden. You know, it's like, is this the play to go to Waller? And if he missed them, is that the wrong play? Yeah, I, I would just say you need to find someone in, in your life that looks at you the way that Derek <laughs> Carr looks at Darren Waller. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. I mean, it's hard to argue with the fact that, like, Brian Edwards looked great on those four plays. So hopefully they can give him some more opportunities. Yeah, and the confidence for him, too. Like, there had, yeah. been, there had been a target earlier in the game where he, I thought he maybe could have maneuvered, oh, maneuvered, maneuvered his body a little bit better on that one and, and gone up and competed for it. But He competed to make sure that the defender couldn't catch it. Yeah, I, I just think confidence-wise, this is a big step for him. Hopefully. Where there's smoke, there's fire. We've got three surprise performances from week one. We're deciding whether they're just plain smoke or you should get in while the uh, the fire is very low, maybe. <laughs> what, so it can um, engulf you? <laughs> yeah, like it, a witch? It, it engulfs you with <laughs> fantasy points. Mark Ingram against Jacksonville. Let me repeat that. Mark Ingram against Jacksonville, yes. 26 for 85. Let me repeat that. 26 carries, 85 yards and a touchdown. Has Cleveland, Carolina, Buffalo had the most carries of any running back inside the five-yard yes. line. Smoke or fire for Mark Ingram? It's delicious garbage if you uh, have been following the show and you heard about uh, my league of record draft. I drafted Mark Ingram for and – for this possibility that he looked like he was going to be the real starter where David Johnson had been pushed, you know, back, which the, the Dave, David Johnson is the third down running back for Houston, but it was, is it Philip Lindsay? The preseason, it at least indicated that marking was going to be the starter. And he was the guy who got the vast majority of the volume. Now, Mark Ingram, I think that this is absolutely fire that he is the guy. If Houston has a positive game script, Mark Ingram will be the one that they go to. Which means will, it's smoke. <laughs> will they have tons of positive game scripts like they did against Jacksonville? That's where it's far more difficult. Mike and I rewatched this game yes. yesterday um, and, and in its entirety. Um, how bad Jacksonville was was impressive. Yes. Uh, I mean, they, they really put on a show because I, I've never seen a team – dominate another team while being so bad and that was the Houston Texans so uh Ingram I think if you're talking about is this for real that he is the RB1 for this team yes but he's not going to be able to get 26 carries they were they were up the entire game um and this is a team that has the lowest win total projection um in the NFL and so it, Plus, David Johnson is the third down back. Mm -hmm. And this opportunity, you said, Andy, most carries inside the five in week one. That was a gift from turnover after turnover after turnover, short fields uh, from the Jacksonville Jaguars. That was, and these weren't, these weren't outstanding defensive plays that the Texans were making. This was, oh no, Trevor Lawrence, why did you throw that ball? Yes. What were you looking at type of, type of moments? So I, I think this is for fantasy smoke. I would lean that direction, um, but you you fight to have a start, a flexible running back, an emergency running back. 
Uh, it kind of you brought up the fact it kind of reminded you of what Jacksonville did last year. They won Week One, and then they lost the rest of the the way. And Cleveland next week is going to be a rude awakening, most likely. I wouldn't be surprised that David Johnson has the most productive fantasy week, to be honest. Yeah. So smoke. I think we all agree that Mark Ingram's putting up 26 carries and a touchdown on a weekly basis is smoke, but he should be added for, no doubt. for the volume. Christian Kirk, five targets, five catches, 70 yards, two touchdowns <sighs> against Tennessee. Bad defense. They're at home this week against Minnesota. Bad defense. At Jacksonville. Bad defense. And then the Rams. He's had stretches as, as a Cardinal where he's been on fire. We know Hopkins is going to get um, – the majority of targets. Rondale Moore came out, ran 14 routes, had five targets. Christian Kirk, to me, it's smoke. It's smoke, in my opinion. I don't think that you're going to predictably be able to start him. Jason? Yeah, this is this is someone who I expect him to have five good games this year. Um, and, um, I mean, honestly, the, one sec the second one might be this coming week. I mean, at home against Minnesota, there's not much more to like than – than that based on what we saw you know the Cincinnati Bengals do against Minnesota this last week um, but when I'm looking at the wide receiver ads this week Christian Kirk is not the name on the top of my list he might have had the most fantasy points but we talked about this on yesterday's show the statistical history of these later round ADP guys who blow up in week one the vast majority of the time it's smoke it's not a sustained breakout and at this point in Christian Kirk's career I I don't think it's going to be um, something special. So he's he's not my top ad. Oh, man. He, Kirk is so tough to gauge here because you, because when we've seen him flash, he's looked like a very solid, very competent wide receiver. He was a second-round pick. He had three games last year. He, he also had uh, – like if you follow the, the, the career history of, of Christian Kirk – he had a, a solid rookie season that looked like he was going to be a breakout player. Then he was then he dealt with injuries in year two, and he dealt with injuries in year three. He had the uh, the ankle sprain, I believe it was last year, that he had to, to fight through. So he's he's interesting to me. I I can't go all in on Christian Kirk, uh, which is if it's smoke or fire, I have to lean. Can I say dense dense smoke? No, sure. Dang it. Mm, no, overridden. Uh, DJ Chark, 12 targets in the game, three for 86 and a touchdown. Led the team in targets. DJ Chark at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Played Houston. Yes. Um, yeah, Marvin they, Jones scored. Uh, LaVisca Chenault had a bunch of targets, but all three players, uh, all the juniors. And the, the Marvin Jones. Very involved. The Marvin Jones touchdown was. Uh, oh, garbage because it was right at the end of the game where five seconds left in the, the game. game should have been over and they kept going so that was a complete garbage time touchdown not that Marvin Jones is is garbage but saying while he scored it was at the very end this DJ Chark to me is is fire because the Jags suck they are going to be in a negative game script far more than they will be in in a run heavy situation and even like Denver, I think that that Denver is going to be able to uh, hold them down, and they're going to have to go into a high volume passing attack. Arizona, Cincinnati, these are teams that are going to put up points on the Jack on on the Jags, and DJ Chark is going to see a bunch of targets. Yeah, I, I actually think it's fire as well. Trevor Lawrence did not play great, but I do think he's going to play better and better and better. Twelve targets now. <laughs> now we've we we have not been the uh, I would say the kindest. Um, to the outlook of DJ Chark this offseason. And you get 12 targets. I would hope you get more than three receptions. Yes. Um, so that that's a problem. But I, I do think he is probably their number one wide receiver. Uh, I do not agree. I will go smoke. I would rather have Marvin Jones or LaVisca Chenault rest the season than DJ Chark. So I think all three will be involved. They're all going to have their games. I think the other two are going to be more consistent. Chenault will definitely be more consistent just because the – manufactured depth, depth of targets and yes, stuff. Yeah, yeah, his floor will be. I yes. mean, um, you know, you, you bring up a good point, 12 targets, three catches. I'm going to hold some uh, judgment for the next couple of weeks. And, and if I'm wrong, accountability. I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If DJ comes out and does it against these matchups that Mike brought up. All right, that was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, brought to you, as always, by Traeger Grills. 
Put a Traeger Wood pellet grill in your starting lineup and make every game day more delicious. You can head to Traeger.com slash footballers to discover how simple wood-fired cooking can be. And we want to thank Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, which is never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Listen up. We have a never not working segment every Thursday going through this season. And we are, look, today is the waiver wire show, but we're never not working. We're going to be talking about the waiver pickups later in the week as well. Guys that maybe were dropped, um, you know, guys that uh, an injury in the drop in it the like week. it's hard. Dro- oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're not work. We're never not working like head and shoulders is never not working. Regular use of head and shoulders scalp shield technology provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. And Foot Clan, we want to thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's show. It is fantastic to see the teams back out on the gridiron, and that was just week one we have five point eight eight percent we have a whole lot of football left in DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the nfl they're going to put you in the center of the action for week two new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit by signing up using the code ballers it's simple you just pick your lineup you stay under the salary cap and you see how your teams stack up against the competition feel the nfl action like never before with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. We're doing that ourselves. Every Friday we're setting our lineups. Uh, very excited for this Friday's segment to yeah, see Yeah, I'm spinning who... the wheel of shame. <laughs> well, you get spoiler alert. Yeah, I lost big time. <laughs> You're going to be wearing a stupid hat and looking so stupid. Download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS. This week, new customers get that free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Enter the code BALLERS to get that free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Goodbye, sweet prince. Raheem Mostert placed on injured reserve for Goodness gracious. eight weeks after suffering a knee cartilage injury in week one. I couldn't be more disappointed in this news. You know, I, I even said in the preseason, I said, look, it's, it's probable that he ends up missing time during the year. Two carries? Right after being named a team captain, right after they put Trey Sermon on, the, on ice? Um, heartbreaking. Yes. Heartbreaking for for those that invested in Raheem Mostert. Yours truly, uh, I had to move him into IR in four leagues today. So, Oof. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick did suffer a hip subluxation. Uh, MRI confirmed it, placed on IR. No indication whether it's season ending. Mm. It's fantasy season ending, in my opinion. Yeah, There's not going to be a high likelihood that you're leaning on Ryan Fitzpatrick at any point during this season. This, this is a devastating injury for Fitzpatrick the opportunity was massive he he might be at the end and it, you know it's just so heartbreaking for for Washington too because yes. if you end up like I don't think the gap between Fitzpatrick and Heineke is very big but one of them got every first team rep and got all the practice and got all the training camp and the team was ready for him and if you look backwards it's like man if if Taylor Heineke had had that opportunity He's just starting behind the eight ball, and it's unfortunate, and it's going to hurt everybody from yeah. from Logan Thomas to to Terry McLaurin to Antonio Gibson to the eventual Curtis Samuel. It is a um, and and the, and the team. I mean, I I had Dallas win in this division, but Washington was a favorite by a lot of people, and now it's wide open. Yeah, I mean, they they lost this game in close fashion. That if Fitzpatrick hadn't have left, they very easily could have you know changed that into a W. Zach Ertz injury being evaluated by head coach, want to know, head coach Nick Sirianni. Uh, hamstring injury, brief exit was precautionary. Uh, I talked to some people Ooh. talked to some people out of Philadelphia. I'm just kidding. Did, okay, thank you. Uh, but um, he should be all right. Jamison Crowder has a chance to play in week two for the Jets. Okay. Uh, big bad news. Uh, Jason and I watched through every snap of the entire Jets game this past week. Um, when... When Becton went down, their left yep. tackle, who's going to miss four to six weeks, 
It was not good for yeah, Zach Wilson. That's when the sacks started flowing. However, I will give Zach Wilson credit. We kind of poo-pooed on that offense yesterday. First game under Robert Sala. Look, it's not going to be an easy path forward for him. He did make some plays. And in a really bad offensive performance, Corey Davis still had a big game. So I think that you saw some of the elite traits from Zach Wilson. He was very uh, effective in getting out of the pocket. Jason brought up the fact they should design more of this for him, and and they'd be wise to do so if he's going to be getting chased down on his blind side anyway. Yeah, especially with how that offensive line was. I mean, they they made so much uh, moves and and spent money and draft picks to so improve much moves to, to improve the offensive line, and um, it didn't work because that offensive line was was trash. And it wasn't just you know when 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 you lose your left tackle, you think oh well, the pressure's coming from the left. It came from everywhere, the right, the middle, everything. So um, yeah, you got to run, you got to roll him out, get him in space, because use his legs. Yep. And then Zach Martin re returns from the COVID list. This is good news for the Cowboys. That's mm -hmm. the right guard uh, extraordinaire coming back to hopefully help the running game. Uh, and then Kenny Stills, oh gosh, signed to the Saints practice squad on Monday. Yeah, I don't know back, why Jason we're talking Kenny about this. Bills. Yeah. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. And, and just for the record, Kenny Stills, uh, that, that doesn't, that's not relevant. Correct. Other than for your own personal enjoyment. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm enjoying it. If you want breaking news, get the Sleeper app today. Um, the 2021 season, it's here. And, there's going to be news every single week that you need to get information on, and then you can make a move in your league. So without further ado, it's time to talk the ever-important waivers. Put me in, coach. Yeah, I mean, the money drop for this show, that thing started That was with Kenny Bills, money, baby. Money, money, money. Kenny Bills. But it's Brooks's now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, because he's so rich. Along with everything else. That's all, mine. All material possessions are now his. <laughs> all right, let's talk waivers. Um, there are a couple players I'm, I'm really not sure exactly what to do with, uh, and uh, it's time to, it's time to dig in. You know, you two types of league formats out there: open waivers where you choose to give up your waiver priority spot if you finished 0 one you might be sitting one or two so we can talk about whether you give that spot up for any of these players and then uh, hopefully many of you are in fab leagues where you have a hundred dollar budget for the course over the course of the year to put in bids blind bidding and we'll decide kind of what percentage of your remaining budget you would consider on these players and hopefully give you some guidance that will be beneficial especially in week one um and and this is the week to pay close attention to who gets dropped to pick up these players because there yes. are going to be some names that I know are going to hit the open market. I would not be shocked if you saw Javante Williams hit the open market in leagues this week. Um, player, Scoop them up. Players like that where he gets dropped to go pick up an Elijah Mitchell or somebody like that. Um, all right, let's start at the wide receiver position. Top drop candidates that were coming through on, on Twitter, because obviously to pick somebody up, you got to let somebody go. Uh, Marquez Callaway, I'm fine dropping him. See, he is, to me, a drop it like a top candidate, hmm. because I, I assume he'll be dropped just about everywhere. He was a late-round pick that did absolutely nothing, but we talked about this prior to the Packers game, that you know their number one wide receiver is going to be covered by Jair Alexander, who's great. That's what they shut down all last year, they shut it down here. Um, so he is, am I willing to drop Marquez Callaway? Absolutely. But is he a must drop? No. And and I think that there is a position, you know, Russell Gage, for instance. If you're telling me I should choose between Russell Gage and Marquez Callaway, I would rather take a shot on Callaway. So I, would I. I see the path for him still being the number one while Michael Thomas is out. Um, Rewatching the Falcons game, which I well the number two, Jason Kenny Bills. <laughs> sure, yes. Um, you know it was one of those. Um, I I, th I thought the Falcons offense was slightly better than than what they produced. I mean, in the end, everybody stunk and they produced very little. It was it was mostly just penalties ruining every drive. But Russell Gage is not the the guy, and this is a team that 
clearly wants to run the ball more than they did last year. So I would move on from Arthur. Russell Gage. Brandon Ayuk. No, I would do not drop Brandon Ayuk. It is. I mean, you're you're in a you're in a mess. You're in a pickle uh, until he's healthy and ready to go. But I would not be dropping him. Mike Williams, seventy-seven percent rostered. Is that the number? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we so, just wanted to remind people that if he's just there, take he's, a little peek. He's by far the best pickup. Yes. Um, if I had him, I would not be trying to trade him off of this big game. I would be trying to ride it out because the the draft pedigree and the target totals and the way that he was designed into the offense in this game was everything you hoped you would see. He looked more spry to me, 8 for 82 and a touchdown. If Justin Herbert takes a step forward as an NFL quarterback, which should happen in your second year, you have plenty of production for two wide receivers. And this is a this is a guy who's had double digit touchdowns, who's had a thousand yards. Um yeah, Mike Williams could just be a legit you know, weekly play. And it's it's a brand new offense. Uh, this is a whole new uh, offensive coaching scheme here for the Chargers, so perhaps well, Mike Williams is just going to be involved. No in. targets to Austin Eckler yeah. in, That's what I was gonna in, say. in week one. So, I mean, they, they were targeting the wide receiver specifically just – And the tight end, who yeah. we'll talk about later. Yep. Sterling Shepard is 40% rostered. Uh, I personally believe this was a mirage for Sterling Shepard uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, he was nine targets, seven for 113 and one. Not, not taking anything away from the player. He's always been Sterling Shepard. He's always been this guy. And when he's heavily targeted, he always produces. However, no Evan Ingram. That's a lot of targets in this offense. Very limited Saquon Barkley. That's a lot of targets in this offense in a first game for Kenny Galladay. So personally, I think he's worth a pickup. I, he's not worth an investment from my fab budget. No, Sterling Shepard should not you, – you're not burning a priority for – you're probably not burning a priority for any of these wide receivers if you've got a top priority, if you've got you know the one or two, um, and you're not dropping a lot of cash. One of the tips that I try to do more often than not is reserve my budget or my priority for the running back position over the wide receivers. For instance – my number one wide receiver pickup this week, assuming that you know Mike Williams is rostered in your league, is actually Tim Patrick. I think Tim sure. Patrick, yeah, Denver Broncos, Denver Broncos wide receiver Tim John Doe Patrick, um, <laughs> is a great pickup. He's what are you doing him dirty like that. Call him John Doe, dude. He's just a guy. I mean, he's just a regular dude that nobody really knows, and he's got no acclaim. It's because his name's Tim Patrick. If it was fireball jones you'd be fine <laughs> oh man fireball jones would be great um but yeah i mean i i think tim patrick will be heavily involved with fireball the injury jones. Fire, with the injury to jerry judy um and the play style of teddy bridgewater i i mean tim patrick will be good he should be started next week in probably yes at least half of fantasy rosters like like i i, I would go through your league and half the teams i'd be like yeah you can't fit Tim Patrick in there. Half the teams, I'd be like, you could probably squeeze him in. Would you drop Callaway for Tim Patrick? Yes. Would you drop Callaway for Sterling Shepard? I would. No. I think I would. I would. Um, I'd still want to remind people that Winston completed 14 passes in a game that they scored 38 points. So maybe though, maybe that's the point though. Maybe he would have completed a lot more in a game where they were. Yeah, I mean, they know, definitely would have. Blew the socks um, off him. So what about uh, Zach John Doe Pascal in Indianapolis? See, I put him in the same category or close to it as Tim Patrick. T.Y. Hilton uh, went down. He's he's down for and out for a long time. Um, I think Zach Pascal will contribute in a in a fairly consistent way on this roster. I I would completely agree. He is in the same category with the you know both. T.Y. Hilton and Jerry Judy going down, these undrafted gyms um, are, are solid. The difference is Zach Pascal's going up against the Los Angeles Rams this week. He's not a guy Ooh, I'm, no. I'm looking to roster through. Like, I just want to hold him for, you know, week six. You know, this is a guy where I'm going to pick him up and play him. If I can, I don't think I'm going to play him this week. Um, yeah, we, like we just talked about Christian Kirk. I would rather pick up Kirk and play him against Minnesota than this week this week yes. yeah no that makes sense if you and, and most of these guys you're probably looking for a flex you're looking for a spot start um other names I want to throw out there real quick 
Nelson Aguilar, a surprise start in that game, ended up with seven targets, five for 72 and a touchdown. He is uh, a yeah, more long-term pickup. With he's the, interesting. And the Jets are this week, so um, I would, I'd pick Nelson Aguilar up. Now, I wouldn't invest a lot in him, but this is where you could put in multiple bids on – you know, a number of these players and then just end up with who you end up with and don't waste any fat. Exactly. Zero dollar bids. Wait until the waiver's clear and your priority isn't burned. And then you just grab one of these guys because Emmanuel Sanders is another name. He didn't yes. he didn't do anything special. He had eight targets. Um, yeah, he, he only ended with four for 52, but he was he like the Buffalo Bills, that offense where they're just going to spread it out and never run and have a whole bunch of wide receivers on the field. Sanders is a part of that. He ran, I think, two fewer routes than Stephon Diggs and Cole Beasley. So Gabe Davis came away with the touchdown, but Sanders is a full-time player. The hardest part about Sanders is not that he'll have a bunch of routes. It's that you would always start Diggs and Beasley above him. And if that's the case, then are you just – Maybe. Are you just rolling – Diggs for sure. But I'm, like, I think I might start Sanders over Cole Beasley. The, the eight tar What did Beasley end up with target-wise? 12. 12? I mean, eight targets for Sanders, and those are going to be Gabe Davis, bigger plays. How do you know when when to play him or Gabe Davis? Um, uh, Gabe Davis is like he's an interesting player. He's but better than Sanders. Sanders is almost thirty five years old. B b we think he's better, like the the fantasy community does. But Buffalo is using Sanders on the field. Help us settle the debate, Jason. Who would you I, I put would, more stock in for the rest of the season? I would put it in Emmanuel Sanders, just because. He's on the field running more routes. I think he'll end up with more targets. The issue with Emmanuel Sanders is his foot. And if he's healthy and he's out there, then they brought him in to use him clearly. Uh, however, if you want a, a better wide receiver to stash that, you know, if you're not starting Emmanuel Sanders and you are looking for maybe not a guy that you're going to play right away, but someone that, you know, you've been keeping an eye on, you've got an extra roster spot, you want big upside later, that to me might be Terrace Marshall Jr., who out-targeted Robbie Anderson, was was really heavily involved. Um, he didn't do much at all. Right. Three for 26, but he had six targets, um, and he saw a target on 26% of his routes, which was better than DJ Moore, better than Robbie Anderson, um, and he's only going to get more and more involved as the season goes on. Could be tough sliding this week against New Orleans, but then gets Houston and Dallas. K.J. Osborne, wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Seven for 76, same amount of targets as Justin Jefferson, Keep your eyes on him. He is not rostered in any leagues. He's, Literally none. He, he is somebody who might be on your dynasty waiver wire. Right. If uh, Because this was, uh, for me, this was definitely unexpected. You you they would you knew the Vikings would have to do something when Irv Smith uh, was lost for Some thought it would be Didi. Some thought it would be right. Didi Westbrook or other, other options in the slot. But the, the fact that they went so heavily to a three wide receiver set, that was – very interesting. Now, they did trade for Chris Herndon. Maybe as Herndon becomes more comfortable, they shift back to being the 12 personnel. But for the time being, Osborne was out there, and he was nine targets yeah, he, for, for Osborne. He was a rookie last year, so this is the, the second year breakout, uh, unexpected. His role, though, in the offense, he, you know, he's the short, he's the PPR guy. He's the Cole Beasley of the Minnesota Vikings, where you know you're you're getting ten yards a reception here, uh, just the underneath stuff. So he's more of a PPR focused player to me. And small sample, yeah. but the Vikings did not seem to have fixed their defensive woes yet. Uh, yes or no? Stash Rondell Moore of the Arizona Cardinals. Yes. So I I really wanted to to bring him up. Because he only ran, uh, Jason mentioned it, he ran 14 routes, but he was targeted on five. I don't think that it's Rondale Moore season in week two, probably not in week three, but he is such an explosive athlete. Second round pick this year by the Arizona Cardinals that if you see those snaps go up, he could become extremely interesting. If, if A.J. Green doesn't have a game this week against Minnesota at home, like a decent game. And AJ Green looked really bad to me. He he had really uh, six targets. I think. Yes. If he doesn't have a game this week against Minnesota, I think at that point in time you'll see uh, more, more Kirk and more 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 more. Would you rather more 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 more? Would you rather stash? More, more. Um, you know, <laughs> talk about these two rookie stashes, not guys you're playing yet. Terrace Marshall, who was more involved, is probably going to get more targets on the year, but in a worse offense, or Rondell Moore. Terrace Marshall. Marshall. 
Okay. Running backs. Far this, more important to your yeah, team. Yeah, this is the big stuff. We um, made it. We should we should lead with running backs. No, no, no. no. You, you make put them. the milk at the back of the grocery store. That's right, Jay. You make them walk through the grocery <laughs> store, and then it's like, oh, you know what? I found some great stuff on my way to get the milk, and you know what? I hope you did, too. I didn't even say anything about jointhefoot.com. Oh, All the speaking way up. up to this point. Ridiculous. Which is they didn't have to walk through that aisle at all. <laughs> oh, well, now if they skipped, I mean, you could still put something next to the milk. About jointhefoot.com? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> do they do a lot of hard like sales right next to the milk? No joke. No, no joke do. at my local grocery store right next to the milk. Oh, gosh. The hostess. Hostess apple yeah, pie. I knew they have a display. No joke. Uh, I go get the milk. I volunteer for that job. <laughs> Jason, where's the milk? <laughs> oh, I'll go, I I'll go again. It. I'll be right and back. Why is there a giant box shape in your pocket? And if you eat them in the store, you don't have to pay for them, right? As long as you finish it before you still, get to the... I think you're still supposed to pay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, running... Not like half off? This, this box is half if you, empty. This if you box just, is open. I'd like to buy this wrapper. <laughs> Um, running back is like I, I I need one right in our league of record. Well, I lost one Moster. available. I lost Moster, and I and I went around all the teams, and we're a double flex league, and there ain't no running backs to go around. Like every team feels like they don't have enough depth enough depth at running back. This is where people will compete on the waiver wire, and this is also where there are drop candidates, some flyers that people took to start the year, where they're saying, you know. You don't get unlimited roster spots. And even though these names are one of those, some of the names that you're like, well, you should hold them because they're running backs. You might not get the choice. You might need a start. So I'm going to name five names real quick. Let me know if you're willing to drop them. Okay. Ronald Jones. No. <laughs> Why'd you start so hard? Um, I am not willing to drop Ronald Jones. Yeah, I would say I, it's no. too tough at running back to let Raheem, go. Raheem Mostert. Yes. Yeah. If you don't have an IR, I would recommend dropping him. I know it's I know he could come back and be great, but Jeff Wilson will come back at some point before Raheem Mostert. Um you you've got opportunity here for Elijah Mitchell, for Trey Sermon, and you've got the injury, you know, history of Raheem Mostert. You're not clogging your roster with Raheem Mostert on it. Sony Michelle, only one carry in week one. Yeah, I'm willing to drop him for one of uh one of these top pickups. But I, I would prefer to see one more week. James Connor. Oh no, no Connor was involved. Yeah. Trey Sermon. No, no. freaking way. No. That that was the most common thing I saw. Was yeah. wondering if you could drop Trey Sermon. W whether they should to go pick up Elijah Mitchell. I mean uh, that. So there's a there's an interesting debate there of whether it's Trey Sermon or Elijah Mitchell who will be the one to have ranked first. However, both need to be rostered. You do not drop Trey Sermon to pick up Elijah Mitchell. You drop a wide receiver on your yep. roster. So let's start with Elijah Mitchell. Rookie running back for the San Francisco 49ers. Went out, had 19 for 104 and one. Played 68% of snaps. It was basically him and Jermichael Hasty because Trey Sermon was inactive on Sunday. Uh, this was against Detroit. They have Philadelphia, Green Bay, Seattle coming up. Elijah Mitchell is really difficult for me. Let me throw the – I want your advice on it, and I'm just going to throw the variables out there. I'm going to throw out the things, the thought bubbles that pop up above my head when I think about how much to invest on Elijah Mitchell. Number one, Trey Sermon is the high draft capital rookie. He's coming back. Number two, Jeff Wilson Jr. coming back between weeks six and eight. Number three, Raheem Mostert back at some point in time. Number four, Kyle Shanahan, he has a bag of tricks, and he shows yes. no one. <laughs> so those things combined with really great performance but against Detroit. So what do you do? I want to know fab recommendation here, and whether it's really conditional and whether – like I don't see him as a stash. I see him as an emergency play right now. The yeah, certainly. He's, he's a player. You're going to pick him up. You're going to put him in your lineup. I view the current situation, uh, Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert not a part of the roster yet, um, as Elijah Mitchell and Trey Sermon as a, a committee. I don't think either guy's going to get everything, um, but he is important. This is a good, solid running uh, team, running attack. That's why 
Uh, Raheem Mostert had value along with Raheem Mostert's speed, but Elijah Mitchell has that speed. That's the th he was a sub four four. He's very Mostert esque. Uh, he he is. Um, he's he's a great athlete. And look, I'm just gonna say it. Kyle Shanahan, just an unbelievably good coach. Monstrous ego. I mean, this guy just wants to prove it's him doing it. He he loves grabbing these undrafted rookies, these late round guys, these Alfred Morrises and saying, "I did this. This is this is my system." And and I'm not saying that that that's why he would put Elijah Mitchell in over Trey Sermon, but if he likes Elijah Mitchell, that that goes to his ego. So I believe like Elijah Sherfield and Brandon Ayuk. Exactly. Um it's it's Shanahan doing it. Um and so I, I believe Elijah Mitchell will be involved. He is a running back that you can grab on waivers week one and and have him at least for a while. He might yeah. not be a full season guy for you. And to me, that doesn't matter. I, I know like to go back to those concerns you were laying out, Andy, if Jeff Wilson back in week six, that's an eternity from well, now in fantasy let, football. I still don't have the advice I need. Okay. The advice I I have no doubt Elijah Mitchell is going to be part of a committee and effective and all that. The advice I need is whether or not how much do I invest on this temporary situation for Elijah Mitchell. You say it's an eternity away. I, you're right. Is five weeks can make the playoffs for you, but are you investing eighty percent of your fab on Elijah Mitchell? Are you no, investing ninety percent of your fab on Elijah Mitchell? No, I'm not doing a. This isn't a full fab dump for me, but I'm going at least a heavy. Kittle. Yeah. Well, I thought that, a Kittle was Kittle's forty four. Was oh. it? Oh. I thought a Kittle was 55. Uh, no, that's a Hagar. <laughs> a Hagar is 55. Would you invest a Kittle or a Hagar? I uh, it depends on your team situation. I mean, I'm really willing does. to go full Hagar. What about a general situation? advice? You, you'd go full Hagar. 55. I, I, th I think that's a good amount. 55% of your budget is good. The reality in I every league. I lost What would you invest if it were me? I was going to say the reality in every league is that there will be a team or two that really needs them and that team's going to have to pay up and get them so yeah you might you might need to spend 60 65 uh, or you know whatever you want to secure it um it, he's going to cost you a lot and you view that as now the decision for elijah mitchell should be contextualized by the other options you have to pick up and play at, at running back so it, right you know if you can spend if you have to spend 75 to get elijah mitchell or you can spend 20 to get cordero patterson or you have to spend seventy five to get Elijah Mitchell, but you can spend forty five to get Latavius Murray. What decision are you making as a team? The only guy that is in the tier of Elijah Mitchell, as in I'm able to start this guy every week, is how I look at the next month. Is Latavius Murray? So Agreed. I not Naeem Hines. Uh, sure, Naeem, Naeem Hines is there, but he's rostered in seventy percent of leagues, so he's probably not there. Um, Elijah Mitchell and Latavius Murray, I think, are the two guys where I'm I'm trying to acquire an actual starting running back. Whereas I love Cordero Patterson. I, I mean, he was super involved, and he has always looked great as a running back. Um, he should be picked up for sure. But when I pick up Cordero Patterson, I'm probably not starting him. I mean, I mean certain teams would have to, but he's more of a – and he's yeah he's on the Atlanta Falcons behind Mike Davis, but you're right. They, Arthur demands that it will be established in Atlanta, even if it is neg negative for your team. Uh, well, and he can catch the football, which is nice. Yes. I and mean, he was a wide receiver for many years, and seven for fifty four, two for thirteen. And it was early too. Like he he was part of this game plan. But the the last note I'll say for Elijah I snuck him onto our my dynasty roster before the weekend. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, and some places he has dual eligibility right. positional eligibility the last thing i'll say on elijah mitchell is he the the advantage he has now is he has already proven to the coach i can do this on the nfl field trey sermon hasn't been able to, to right. prove that yet and it's not an impossible i you you default to draft capital that's a strong argument and that's usually what wins but it does happen in reverse Aaron Jones was drafted after Jamal Williams in Green Bay. Now, I know it's a completely different team, but I'm just bringing up the point that the team thought Jamal Williams was better during the draft process, and then they got Aaron Jones, and then some injuries happened, and things got shook up, and they now, were They were next to each other, though, right? Like a round apart? It was, uh, yeah, fourth think, and fifth round, yeah. Right. So, but I just, mean, Elijah was sixth rounder. But, and Elijah has a speed that Trey Sermon does not have. 
Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Tony Jones Jr., 11 for 50 in a game where uh, in, you know, they blew out the pa- uh, the Packers, and I liked everything I saw from Tony Jones Jr. He, yeah. if, he's, if he's available in your league, he needs to be added. I agree, but I do think he is more of an insurance back in the case that Alvin Kamara goes down than a standalone value. He only had, I believe, two carries um, in the first, I want to say, three quarters where, where – Mm. once the game was over, it was the right. Tony Jones show because you don't need Alvin Kamara anymore. What about uh, what about Carlos Hyde? You watched that game front to back. James Robinson only had five carries. Carlos Hyde had nine, and he had two targets. What do you do with that offense? I am not going hard after Carlos Hyde. I'll, I'll put a $0 bid in. Going but after, soft after Carlos Hyde? Yeah, I mean, he, he should be rostered, but after re-watching the game, it was really... I mean, Carlos Hyde was involved. Yes. Uh, um, you know, he was in on the first quarter. It's it's not entirely garbage time, but the, the changeover where at the end you look at the box score and you say Carlos Hyde had more carries, more, you know, snaps, it was really when the Jaguars were way down and the game was out of reach all the garbage time um stuff that we saw out of trevor lawrence and marvin jones those were the drives where carlos hyde was on the field then all right any other big names at running back that you want to talk about uh, a couple quick more like a ppr situation names to throw out james white is back for the patriots with mac jones we saw seven targets for white so he is a flex play in ppr leagues and kenneth gainwell from the philadelphia eagles that's a big is name. Incredibly interesting. Nine carries, thirty-seven yards, and a I mean he had a sweet touchdown run. Uh only three targets. But where it's interesting is this totally seemed like it was going to be Boston Scott. He's Boston's the veteran. Kenneth Gamble's a, a fourth round pick, I I think. But Boston Scott, nope. He he saw no touches. It all, was yeah. It, it was all Miles Sanders and Kenneth Gainwell. And this was a positive game script for the Eagles. If they get in a negative one, Kenneth Gainwell might be out there even more catching passes. This had nothing to do with game script. Kenneth Gainwell was involved right off the bat in this game. He actually had two touchdowns, one of which was called back by some yeah. wonky yeah, yeah, illegal yeah. formation um, you know, thing. But he was super involved. He is you know, a, a, a very capable – like I would – I'm I'm on the I'm not sure who I'd rather have between James White and Kenneth Gainwell, but like Kenneth Gainwell, I would I would put ahead of Tony Jones Jr. I think Kenneth Gainwell is someone that you could start in a pinch, okay. especially in a half or full PPR league. Whereas Tony Jones, I would be really hesitant to to start him. All right, we need to talk about tight end options. If you started Mike Gesicki, you are on the hunt for a tight end. I started Mike Gesicki. I am on the hunt for a tight end, Andy. Well, we're talking to you, Jason. Thank you. And um, what do you think about Cole Komet? Chicago Bears. Greater sign than Mike Gesicki. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I am interested. When Cole Komet, Jason? Uh, Yeah, Cole Komet. uh, Look, he had seven targets. He was on the field for 74% of the snaps. The team really loves him. He's young, which means there is, you know, upside. Put, upside, exactly. Like the two main pickups to me are Cole Komet and Jared Cook. Jared Cook, probably more realistic to get a touchdown with a better passing offense. And Jared Cook, I'm going to take a big L on. But there's, yeah, because it looked like it could be Donald, Donald Parham. Yeah. Um, but those two guys are the two to go after. And. While I think that Jared Cook is safer, you just – I don't feel like you have a lot of upside there, whereas there's unknown and upside with the youth in, in Cole Komet. All right. Uh, do you believe, then, in anybody else? Do you believe in anybody else's potential season-long value at tight end? I really don't. I mean, Tyler Conklin was – he was targeted four times. Eh, yeah, I mean, Herndon's going to get worked in. That's gonna, not going to be a fun situation. He's not explosive enough for me to get excited. James O'Shaughnessy, I'm not excited about. I don't. I don't want a fifth target in. Uh, you know, generally speaking, his in a volume bad... was interesting. It was. I mean, yeah, it was a blowout, but he did see eight targets. Uh, I think Manhurts was the other tight end on the team, and he ended up scoring the touchdown. So I mean, if if O'Shaughnessy had gone six for forty eight, and that play had been called for him with the touchdown, people would be uh, very interested. In him, Dalton Schultz, it, they 
the for the Cowboys, Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin were essentially almost the same when it comes to the the peripherals and routes run and things. Dalton Schultz kind of had a a slight it, or he had a, the advantage in targets for sure. So I I guess he, no, you no you go with you. Dalton Schultz. No, that's a no thank I, you. I, I, I'm not I, interested. I'm not interested there. The only other team, I mean, it's to me, it's literally Cole Komet, Jared Cook, kind of end of list, and then the only other one that I'm somewhat interested in. Say I don't it. even know what name you're going to say between the two. I, I I agree with you. Which is why neither one is on my and list. And I agree with that. Oh, but I, it's Adam Troutman for me I, first, and then Jawan Johnson second. Jawan Johnson got the two touchdowns. Um, Adam Troutman had six targets. He had two just horrifically stinky drops. I mean, did. not like – they're just on him. Like, terrible, terrible job. But um, – Troutman has still the opportunity there. He was involved. He had the target, so he would be yes. the third on my list. And you, but also put in some more context into the six targets that you're like, oh, that doesn't sound that great. That was thirty percent of Jameis Winston's throws. Right, a thirty percent target share went to Adam Troutman uh, on a game that all, they just ran the ball over and over and over. And when it comes to a tight end. Those are the types of things you have to be looking for. So I, I mean, the, if you want to call it confirmation bias for me, that's fine because I've liked Adam Troutman uh, all off season. But that a thirty percent target share in in week one is very interesting. Juwan Johnson, he got that's touchdown chasing to me. Where I wouldn't touch him with a ten foot pole. Johnson, no, yeah, it's I'm not in. I mean, a, you can find ten ten tight ends every single week that you don't know their names that catch a touchdown. Yeah, and you don't go sign them immediately. Troutman ran double the amount of routes that that Johnson ran. He's Troutman is still very interesting to me. Uh, defensive streamers. New Denver. Orleans. New Orleans plays <laughs> Carolina this week. That's a good one. That's a good one because New Orleans defense. You know, there was there was some turnover. They lost a few pieces. You wondered if they were still going to be good or not, and then they uh, dismantled. Lattimore, Lattimore will be out. Oh, that's that's true, which hurts. But they're going from Green Bay to Carolina. Yeah, and then you've got Cleveland against Houston. You're going to find out how not good Houston's offense is this week. Mm -hmm. um, Arizona, I mean, oh, Arizona the is, streamer a, is me. a huge upside defense. They're at home against Minnesota. You're going to get sacks. You're going to get some pressure and some opportunity for turnovers and Arizona is a team that I would go heavy like usually when we're talking about a fab situation for a defense it's like one two whatever but Arizona ma massive DST up scoring upside like Andy said plays Minnesota their offensive line is weak and Chandler Jones and uh, J.J. Watt are going to feast again. And then who's up next? Oh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is a twofer that if you're – I would I'd move it. I'd go three to five for Arizona because I think that you have two weeks in a row that your defense could win you a week. And the nice thing there is that they are widely available. They're only yes. rostered in 4% of leagues, so they are the stream of the week, whereas Cleveland, uh, they're, they're mostly rostered. Denver – they're mostly rostered. They're still available um, in about 40% of leagues, so they are out there. They are a twofer as well. Jacksonville Jaguars, the New York Jets, boom, bam. Yeah, that's uh, great. Thank you, man. <laughs> Full stream ahead. Streaming quarterback options. We always give them to you on Tuesdays ahead of waiver day so that you can go pick them up and don't have to compete for them later or let somebody else steal them on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, I will go with Jameis Winston at Carolina. The matchup is good. Winston was efficient. He did not turn the ball over. Uh, there are a couple of pickups I like a little bit more that you guys are going to discuss. But Jameis Winston, there's no – this is not chasing five touchdowns. This is hoping for two yes. against Carolina. And um, – you know, another week of confidence, throwing the ball to Alvin Kamara. Marquez Callaway not having, you know, that's his number one target. He took a, the first couple shots at him and then was like, oh, I, I don't need to do that. <laughs> I, I've got other options. But I'll go Winston against Carolina. Yeah, I, th I think he is a, a fine stream. I mean, the matchup isn't scary, and he's coming off a great week. I'm going to go Big Ben, who's not coming off anything special. He was on the road in a very defensive-oriented game against the Buffalo Bills last week. But now the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, coming off of their huge Monday night win, are traveling across the country 
to where Big Ben actually has his fantasy relevance, which is at home. I think the matchup is good. I'm fine to play Big Ben as a streaming option. And I will take Teddy Bridgewater against the Jacksonville Jaguars, a defense that made Tyrod Taylor look like a top-tier quarterback. It sucks not having Jerry Judy there, but, I mean, Cortland Sutton could emerge, Noah Fant, and come on, guys. Fireball Tim Patrick. Mm. One, Jason's top wide receiver pickup of the week. It the, the matchup is there. Teddy B will put up enough points that he'll be a good streamer. I'm really excited about Noah Fant. Oh, yeah, yeah you should be. Absolutely. With, with no Jerry Judy, all my excitement for John Doe is even higher for Noah Fant. Fireball. Jason, I, uh, going fireball. A little bonus name I'll throw out there. I think Jimmy G is going to have a great game against Philadelphia. They, their offense, the passing game, looked exactly like what I – when they went to the Super Bowl to me. Um, I think you're going to see Kittle, Debo, and hopefully some Brandon Ayuk in this one have a big game against Philly. And Philly is going to do some work against San Francisco's D. They were not impressive in week one. Lost Jason Verrett, signed Dre Kirkpatrick, which uh, that's a downgrade. Ooh. So very interesting. Uh, Brooksy, do, do we have any other breaking news to talk about? I heard, I heard uh, Ronald Jones has exited the doghouse. Is that factually accurate? He got named the starter. Yeah. That's because you don't drop Ronald Jones because this happened last year. He finished RB16. Now, it's going to be painful. You know, you, you know, they say, what, like a spoonful of sugar makes yep, the, the medicine yeah, go down? That's what Mary says. No sugar in Tampa. Oh, it, no. It's painful. There's but no you, gluten either. But you can still – this team is so ridiculously good. Yeah. The Buccaneers are so good. Now, I mean, we'll get into it, I'm sure, in the matchups. Are you willing to put Ronald Jones in this week? Last year – Am I willing to put Ronald Jones in this week? Yeah, if I pinch my nose, I can I can swallow that down. Last year, every time Ronald Jones had a fumble, the next Big week, game? no, mm -mm. the opposite. The oh, next okay. game, he was doghouse. What was interesting about Tampa, just to talk about this for a second, Leonard Fournette had seven targets. That was one of the leaders in the yes. running back position on the week. And they were, if you saw it, there were a lot of designed plays for him. These were intentional screens to to. Yes. Leonard Fournette. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you're desperate. Well, against play, the Falcons. Yeah, I mean, I'd play Ronald Jones if you're desperate. You just you got to flex afterwards or cry. Uh, all right. We're closing out the show. We want to thank Traeger G Grills for supporting us. Traeger Grills, look, you can fire up that wood-fired grill mm -hmm. on game day. What is your favorite thing to cook on a Traeger? Uh, mine is a Wagyu Manhattan fillet. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> but uh, why do I regret asking that mm, question? It's so good. It's all red. Mike, golden you're, on the you're a burger man. I am absolutely a burger man. But the the best you go part, when you when you grill burgers, do you do you, you double dip? You get a couple burgers in there. Uh, look, I've been known to to make myself <laughs> a double patty. double 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 at home. But the best part when you have the Traeger grill, the and it's game day. The best part is. It is, the cook is going on, and then your phone tells you when the burgers are ready. You don't miss the game and have to look over your shoulder like, what did I miss? What did I miss? No, the, the grill handles the heavy lifting, and then it just tells you when they're ready. The word on the street is uh, Al Borland did not like pork chops, then got a Traeger, and now loves pork chops. <laughs> really? So I don't know how that works, but maybe Smoke. put maybe put some broccoli on there. Uh, Traeger.com slash footballers. I also want to thank Pristine Auction, of course. Stephon Diggs signed jersey is up there for... Ooh. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Uh, broccoli's great on the Traeger. Of course it is. Someone needs to tell me what happened in that game last night. I have no idea what happened. I lost $40,000, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> See you All tomorrow. Right. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.